Marikan in 2013. That, that is the day I joined uh, the July movement. Uh, and, and others would say, but uh, the uh, discipline has translated into a dictatorship. And I, for one, personally, I, I don't have a problem with the, a dictatorship. But uh, wh when you are led by a dictator, you want the dictator uh, to take progress. Some of them, I speak to them, I call them. They are not happy about uh, how he's running the organization. Uh, the Iron Fist approach, not allowing uh, discussion and honest engagement. Uh, point in case is the issue of uh, uh, migration. Uh, I can tell you 80% uh, of the people in the organization, they do not agree with the, with the messages, with, with the messaging. Uh, there are organizations that convert people into spies and, 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 and all of them. I said, no, uh, it's okay, do your vetting. Uh, I, I was awaiting outcomes that this, company, this uh, organization cannot invite you because of one, two, three, four, or a green light you can go. But nothing was forthcoming. It's okay, they've chosen. But don't tell the society that you will fight by any means necessary. Uh, the next thing you enjoy, the comfort of your aircon uh, conditions that you turn. Instead of opening another one, because now we do not want other people to open other parties, but we are yeah. opening parties. I want you to defend that criticism. Uh, President Zuma is better than me, and you is better than Julius Malema. He's got wisdom. He's been leading in trenches, leading the intelligence. So issues that me and you we can't diagnose, he can diagnose those issues because of his wisdom. And I think it is his wisdom that guided him that he must not join uh, the EFF. And wait a while more. You don't want to take it further. No. share the political inquiry, a very quick one. EFF says Mpomorulanu was never their member. That's what the EFF is saying. I have not asked Mpomorulanu about this particular statement because it came while we were recording the down podcast. But uh, being as it may, just so you know, in the, in the podcast he speaks about how the EFF tried to get rid of him through uh, uh, a disciplinary committee because he went to the USA. And Godrej Gadi, the Secretary General at the time, they said they could not fire him. Of very interesting, just listen to what um, Pomoran is saying about this. Thank you, Machine Political and Correct. And continue. All right, thank you. Uh, Let's start. Pomoran. Yes, sir. Fighter or commander? <laughs> what must I refer to you as? Look, uh, uh, the, the names, uh, it's names that uh, can be used. Interchangeably. Uh, interchangeably by, by anyone, but uh, so that we fit the criteria correctly, mm -hmm. I think it would be proper if you say Commander Mpomorola. Commander Mone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mashiach, politically incorrect, I, I, I am just going to allow you to speak. Uh, just take us through how you understood this July movement. When you, did you first hear of it? How did you join it? And just take us through the history and your participation in that. And then afterwards, because I don't want you to, for, to, to remember lots of questions, afterwards and then I'm going to ask you the gains and losses of this uh, July movement, the EFF. Yeah. Look, uh, one was a student uh, at the University of South Africa, I think, uh, around 2012 or maybe even before. Then. And, and one was Can I the, please uh, adjust your mic? Okay. Too much. Oh, okay. Let me, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, one was a, a student activist, uh, and obviously, the uh, pre July 26 uh, movement, uh, one was uh, 
a member of the African National Congress in Italy uh, at the University of uh, South Africa. And uh, remember that uh, the then cohort of the uh, Young Lions uh, shaped the Republic of South Africa in particular when it came to the discussion of uh, expropriation of uh, land without compensation, nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic sectors of the uh, economy, and uh, advocating for free quality uh, education, a corrupt free government. And uh, this was headed uh, correctly by the cohort under the auspices of uh, Julius Silo Malema as its president. Obviously, uh, he was uh, suspended and dismissed by uh, the ANC Youth League. And my view is that uh, there was a state of law, I think, in the country, even a capital to some extent, was celebrating that uh, what they deemed to be a nuisance to them was uh, killed by the leadership of the, of the ANC. Uh, I can't recall exactly, but uh, after maybe a year or so, then there was the emergence of the EFF. And one was excited. I, I, I remember comrades uh, were telling me, uh, because we were studying in the, in the library, in the study hall, and they said that, did you hear that? Uh, uh, Julius Malema uh, from the political party and, and they said uh, we know you are going to join. I remember it was a comrade called Sivupa, he's still there, Junisa working there. And I was excited but it, it took me time because one has always been a problematic student, uh, uh, championing uh, the needs of workers, wanting things to be done right by SRC student structures and employees of the university. Uh, I remember then one was unpopular because uh, there was uh, SRC guys. I remember his name is Gonondo who threatened that he was going to get me expelled in the institution. You know, I'm not sure why was he saying that uh, what powers uh, did he have to say that he could uh, expel me? But one was not uh, threatened or intimidated whatsoever by such utterances. And uh, there was a comrade of mine called uh, uh, Neo, who actually uh, said that uh, I must come to the EFF. But I was waiting for the correct timing and space. You see, because remember it was unpopular then to be affiliated uh, to the EFF. But when EFF launched in Marikan in 2013, that, that is the day I joined uh, the July movement. And uh, politics were radical then. Uh, it's different to now. And I think at a later point we'll explain why we say circumstances are not the same. And you, you can't argue otherwise that uh, they radicalized the politics to a point where whiteness was not comfortable uh, with these young people. And uh, yeah, one joined, one became active, uh, uh, one served through the, through the EFF as a, a, a member of the, of the branch. Uh, as a leader of the branch, uh, the chairperson, and subsequently deployed by the branch of the EFF to the National Student Representative Council of the University. I remember we contested before the formation of the EFF Students Command. So one was in the branch and one was leading in the branch and leading uh, at the National Student Representative Council. By the way, I contested uh, to be the president of the SRC. However, we didn't have the numbers then uh, because we were fairly new and uh, I, I got a sports and cultural officer in the National 
uh, SRC. So uh, that's how, in a nutshell, I got to uh, get myself involved in the politics of the economic freedom fighters. Was this ideal sold to you particularly because of um, at the time and the era of, you know, <coughs> go to Kalaga uh, State of Warehouse, it was during that uh, economic freedom in our lifetime that came from the Youth League then, and it was quickly <coughs> uh, dispersed, uh, dissolved. Were you sold by that, or it was just a socialism in you coming from Cuba, uh, Russia, and this socialism, where, where, where was it planted? Or you, or you had it in you and you liked the way EFF were, were selling that kind of socialism? It was the blend of what you've uh, mentioned. Uh, yeah. Believing in the ideology of uh, uh, Castro, uh, uh, Che, uh, and reading as a student about uh, the history of the Russian uh, Revolution. But the second aspect is that uh, when you come from a historically disadvantaged background and hear these young people speaking about uh, access to education, access to health care, uh, expropriation of land so that uh, the resources can go to the state, then the state distributes accordingly uh, to uh, the needs of the, of the society. You know, it, it was the message that you wanted to hear. More so, if you're studying through NSFAS, uh, uh, radical politics is what you wanted to hear. Uh, uh, also with a little bit theory, uh, that was relevant and said by the vibrant uh, leaders who were not uh, shaken by, by anything. So it was a, a mixture of the background that one comes from the politics of the time then, and the history globally of uh, what has been achieved by the madmen of yesterday. Uh, I sat with the man and I asked him, what are the good things coming from the EFF? Uh, and in particular, we're talking about Julius Malema. Uh, the guy said no, and, <laughs> and we got into a tiff because I could not understand why would you not see, and he was a former member of the EFF. And I want to give you a chance to say, take me through your participation. There are lots of wins and, of course, losses. Uh, at the top of your mind, what is it that you remember? As you see, these ones are the gains that, even, even if it's not you in particular, but the EFF as a collective, these are the wins that we have made to this generation of people seeking emancipation economically. Yeah. Getting young people involved in politics, uh, confronting uh, capital, whether you call it directly or otherwise, but I don't think capital was comfortable in the utterances of uh, Julius as, 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 as a leader. The seven cardinal pillars of the, of the EFF, I mean, uh, there's a crisis which has been chronic of uh, unemployment in this country. And uh, some scholars, they say, dates back in the 80s. Why? Because of the de-industrialization, uh, you know. And uh, for us to witness industrialization, it is only when that we can uh, see the increase of uh, uh, people of the society being employed. And uh, those are the good things um, that uh, Julius was raising uh, uh, sharply as a, as a leader. Uh, the policies, understanding uh, the posture of, of the organization. Uh, also leading the organization uh, with uh, discipline um, uh, and, and others would say, but uh, the discipline has translated into a dictatorship. And I, for one, personally, I, I don't have a problem with uh, a dictatorship. But uh, 
when you are led by a dictator, you want the dictator uh, to take proper uh, decisions in as far as uh, uh, the running of the organization is concerned, you know, uh, allowing uh, a conversation, a discussion. I think even people uh, who were mad, be it Stalin, be it uh, uh, Hitler, uh, I'm sure that they were surrounding themselves with uh, uh, people who are smart intellectuals. They were allowing discussions because you can't uh, cause chaos in the globe or lead such countries if you don't have a robust engagement with those that uh, uh, surround you. Now, I, I don't want, without your permission, to now start discussing the other side of leadership of Julius that I've diagnosed. Uh, you correctly said uh, what is good about him, and I stated that uh, he's an upright uh, 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 leader. Uh, he's capable. He, he can even be uh, the leader of this uh, country in the future. But that will be uh, dependent uh, on the posture he has to take uh, moving forward. Thank you. Uh, the bad things, yeah. or and not necessarily him as an individual, but if it comes to him as an individual, I guess I I cannot. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, bad things about this uh, uh, July movement. Yeah, look, uh, you, you can't have an organization which is now the fourth largest political party in the country. And if it is serious about contesting power in the republic, you can't have everything being surrounded about, around, sorry, one person. You're not going to grow. You're going to reach a ceiling quickly. Uh, in a country such as South Africa, uh, the last time I checked, I think it was maybe 58 million population. You need a different cohort of leadership with the capabilities that must be given platforms so that they can recruit quality membership in the organization. In my view, it is only quality of membership that can build an organization. Remember, we recruit every day. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you recruit, you are also recruiting quality membership. And one is not being classist or anything, but it's factual. Uh, there are people who cannot understand the complexities of some of the issues that we're talking about uh, today. But then if you have quality leadership, they are then able to take a conversation that we're having to a person uh, who is not educated, illiterate, and, uh, and, and, and all of that. Now, unfortunately, uh, EFF is... Uh, uh, centered around uh, Julius. Uh, from the, I think, 40 something members of the CCT, I can tell you with confidence because some of them I speak to them, I call them. They are not happy about uh, how he's running the organization. Uh, the Iron Fist approach, not allowing uh, discussion and honest engagement. Uh, point in case is the issue of uh, uh, migration. I can tell you, 80% uh, of the people in the organization they do not agree with the with the messages with, with the messaging. Uh, give listen to um, Buisenu when he speaks about uh, migration. Uh, very clear, you hear what he's trying to say. There's no contra uh, chain He's speaking uh, about uh, economic integration. Uh, in, in the continent, uh, uh, obviously you can't thrive as a, as a country or a continent if you don't uh, trade amongst the, uh, one another. Uh, he, he speaks uh, unto uh, regional integration, I, I, I spoke about that one. He speaks uh, unto uh, the restaurant industry, for an example. And I, I like his articulation because he said on radio that uh, we must uh, put the correct discussion on the table. 
wherein if you are complaining about uh, foreigners in the restaurant industry, we must be sure of the numbers. Because all industries in the Republic, and here I'm speaking about the restaurant industry, uh, they are dominated by at least your 10 uh, restaurants, meaning it's your Wimpy, your KFC, your Chicken Legion, McDonald's and all of that. In the main, obviously those ones employ uh, South African citizenship. Now, he unpacks that they are boutiques, uh, boutique restaurant or uh, boutique hotels. Uh, where in, in the main, uh, it's your uh, foreign nationals. And when you measure the statistics, uh, his articulation is that you will at least have, what, 70 to 80 percent of uh, the people who are working, uh, at least in the main uh, restaurant uh, industry, who are South Africans. Uh, that, but, but, but there's this 30 percent that is occupied by uh, foreigners. But remember, the 30 percent can make a difference in the event South Africans are occupying the 30 percent occupied by foreign people. Uh, if we are serious about dealing with uh, the unemployment. Now you have Julius saying foreigners must find creative ways of coming into the republic. Meaning even the 30% uh, that is there, uh, you're going to have a crisis. You won't have proper regulation because when people are coming here for whether it's asylum or it's for uh, economic enhancement, uh, they are poor, they don't have anything. You, see, you don't have regulation, meaning the crisis that you are having in the Republic is going to worsen. Uh, why? Because it will be an addition of the unemployment that we have here, added by those who are coming. And, and as a result, you'll have now capital exploiting uh, the labor space, especially the vulnerable workers. And our people will say that uh, capital prefers uh, uh, foreigners. Why? Because uh, they are easily exploited because of their situation, environment, and, and all of that. Now, uh, you can't contradict yourself like that as an organization where one leader, you hear exactly what they are saying and the other leader will then uh, contradict another one. It doesn't help. Uh, South Africa needs to have proper uh, regulation in, a, in as far as uh, the migrants are, are concerned. Another issue is the structures of influence in the society. And I'm making reference to your COSAS, uh, SASCO, uh, ANC Youth League, uh, the Communist Young Party, a Youth Party, uh, the Women's League, uh, the Federation, you, Sanko, you see? Those are vehicles begging, uh, begging, sorry, the ANC uh, in as far as uh, elections and societal issues are concerned. There's no way you can contest them and win if you don't have uh, structures yourself of that nature. You, you know, because there's a reason why COSAS was created, so that it address the needs of the learners. There's a reason why uh, SASCO was formed, is to address uh, issues of uh, students in universities. There's a reason why the ANC Youth League was uh, formed. Uh, to address issues of young people in the society, whether uh, it's in the township or rural areas, now in the suburbs. There is, there's a reason why Women's League is formed, uh, uh, to address uh, issues, be it GBV and all of that. There's a reason why uh, Federation of Workers 
uh, with affiliates aligning with the ANC is formed so that uh, ANC can be assisted in dealing with the uh, worker issues. And I don't think uh, uh, Julius is comfortable in having uh, all those structures, even though uh, the constitution of the EFF speaks about uh, uh, the youth command and uh, the student command. And I, I think Julius is a, a person who can be uh, easily intimidated by young, capable, aspirant uh, uh, leadership. Uh, uh, that's my analysis of, of, of him. I mean, uh, look at rallies of the EFF, you know, or press conferences. I, I don't think it's proper that the top six would be there and not say anything. Uh, all rallies, whether it's uh, June 16 or Women's Day, uh, addressed by uh, one person. The president he must address, but uh, others must be given space so that the society can see that uh, there's a different uh, type of leadership in the organization. So if it revolves around person, it will reach a ceiling, and I think it has reached a, a ceiling currently, unless something drastically happens, you see. And another thing which is uh, critical is that, you see, leaders in the Republic of uh, South Africa, not only Julius, must not exploit the poverty of the citizens of South Africa. You see now, one is being attacked on, 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 on Twitter and social media. I'm unshaken uh, by those things because uh, those people are protecting their jobs. You see? They are deployed in the local legislature, provincial legislature, and the national assembly. Uh, it's a job. If you go against uh, uh, the wishes uh, of a leader, then you are removed and you've lost the employment. Uh, I can't subscribe myself to that. Uh, I'm in politics, I'm in the struggle to fight. I'm not in the struggle for deployment in, in parliament and all of that. And uh, I, I think it's very wrong that uh, uh, when people are raising uh, their views, uh, even legitimately, uh, people will then be seen to be defiant. Uh, that is very wrong. Uh, lastly, on this, uh, on this part, uh, even though I can say a lot of things, is that uh, lately the president of the Students' Command went to Russia. Uh, the leadership was not happy with that. As the inaugural president of the EFF, I went to America and I informed them that uh, I got an invite. It was not only me, it was, uh, uh, I think she's a former MEC, uh, Amanda Bahani from KZN and Teun Tinkulu from the DA, Mpomorlani from the EFF. So ANC and the DA said, this is great, go. EFF said, no, you can't go. And I said, no, I'm going. Because you can't be a leader of young people who does not uh, travel the globe in wanting to understand uh, what is happening in the United States of America because we want the United States of uh, Africa. It's very wrong. It can't be that you have young people, uh, they can't travel and, and, and all of that. They, they can't be... Uh, uh, in unions, uh, as an example, and all of that. So, uh, yeah, the, those are my uh, critiques of a leader, uh, Julius Mane. The latter. In that uh, USA uh, excursion, yeah. was it paid for by the organization that... No, it was uh, uh, paid by... Uh, USA, uh, this NGO from the from the USA, it's an annual thing that they they have. Uh, it's it's a, they invite young people, young leaders uh, from different countries for different reasons. Ours was the 
elections that elected Trump uh, 2016. Uh, yeah. And when I came back, I was suspended. Uh, subsequently, I was told that uh, I must resign. I refused. I didn't resign because I was not wrong. Uh, what were the reasons advanced officially, not, uh, not there, rumors? There were no reasons. Uh, I went to hearing. Uh, I don't know what Gottrich was doing in that hearing. He didn't even understand what he was doing. At some point, uh, the council of Dalimpov was there, but uh, maybe he realized that uh, but the organization doesn't have a case here. Uh, he, he ran away as well. And yeah, there was no case there. And uh, politically, they said no resign. I said, I'm not going to resign, but I'll respect that uh, it's their organization. I don't have to partake uh, in finishing my, my term of office. So you're saying officially there was no official uh, reason they advanced for you to say this is contrary to our stance, yeah. this is, like, what was the problem? Uh, no, they said no. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the former deputy president, immediately when I got an invite, I went to him. Uh, he was with the current SG now when I approached him, he was not the SG then, he was an ordinary CCT member. I said, look, I'm invited in the U USA. He said, there's no problem, however, the organization has to do the vetting. Then I waited for the vetting of the organization. Nothing came through. Are you vetted in your personal capacity or they're vetting the process? No, or the process vetting? themselves, the uh, because they were, he was saying that uh, they are organizations that convert people into spies and, 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 and all of that. I said, no, uh, it's okay, do your vetting. Uh, I, I was awaiting outcomes that this company, this uh, organization cannot invite you because of one, two, three, four, or a green light you can go. But nothing was forthcoming. If nothing is forthcoming, I decided I must go. You see? And I went. So in essence, you, you had not Official. That's the reason I'm asking you. That was there anything in writing that official came from the organization that don't go because of this. So that never came. So in essence, you did not defy anyone by not going because you waited for for this vetting that did not come. Yeah, um, the vetting did not come. I think that uh, three days before, if I'm not mistaken, I think he came and he said, "No, you can't go." And I said, what are the reasons? Uh, he was found wanting. You see, I said, ah, but I'm leaving. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, you just spoke about uh, in uh, being attacked on social media yeah. and stuff. And in the letter you penned, you spoke about the You were expecting this withdrawal of attacks coming your way. And, and, and how? How raw has it been? And do you think it has something to do with uh, the riot act read in Orlando to say you must be seen to be defending the organization in social media and other social spaces? Look, uh, uh, fighters in the main are cowards. Uh, they do things that sometimes they don't believe. And I'm saying, uh, some of these parliamentary leaders, you know, I love, oh, this one is attacking me, but last week we were talking about the organization, constructively critiquing the organization mm -hmm. uh, and all of that. Look, uh, uh, defending the organization, it is, it is what is expected of leadership to those who are junior uh, to them. And defending their, it's not defending an organization when somebody says, I'm not fighting you, I'm resigning. And uh, you think if a person is resigning, then it's an attack on you. I think that's very uh, immature. But to me, those attacks are doing nothing, I can guarantee you. They are not going to change anything, they are not going to change my posture. Uh, they must come. I'm not scared of them, I'm not scared of anyone. I want to talk about Sankarism. I, I had this 
this unfortunate or fortunate uh, time that I met uh, Andy Lemkitama uh -huh. when he was just leaving the EFF. Uh -huh. At the time, Zuma was still in the ANC. He was telling me how unhappy he was. Uh -huh. And you know, we were in a how train, so it wasn't an interview, it wasn't anything yeah. recorded. And I just saw the gentleman, I sat with him, and Kanyanya knowledge. Uh -huh. So he said he was disappointed about certain issues that were not pursued as agreed, so the, the attraction, of course him will be the land and, and other issues. And so I, I questioned him a lot and, and I was blaming him in fact of why does he live without even knowing where he was going. But he spoke of Sankarism, mm -hmm. he said they made promises to people they made promises of, uh, you know, the, the the overalls and stuff. This is just uh, to indicate to people that we are with you in solidarity. And amongst other things, you know, remember the sankarism of, of our kids going to uh, schools in the township. Mm -hmm. We go to hospital that everyone goes and, and, and. He said he was disappointed because that thing was never followed through. So I just want that as an example, or when on the seven cardinal pillars, what is it about it that you thought this has been uh, ignored? Because the criticism says we went to socialism, we went to this, and you know, Sankarism. Now we are on social media defending Gushi revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. Do you think that criticism is unfair? And and. Let me go to the Sankara of and, yes. and I'll please come, continue doing that. I'll come to the seven uh, capital pillars. Remember the, the Sankara of in essence, uh, it stated that uh, once comrades are deployed in, in, in parliament, they are public servants, they will use uh, public services, meaning public hospital. Uh, public schools uh, and all of that and I think a, a principle is something very very uh, 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 difficult if you are not a revolutionary uh, uh, I agree in fact that if you are a public uh, servant in order for you to improve services of the people in the rural and the townships why not subject yourself to the very same conditions, you know? And uh, as you say, uh, the exposure of comrades, it's on other things. Uh, uh, they are now classist. Uh, obviously, if you are classist, it's going to be extremely uh, difficult uh, for you uh, to subject yourself to, to the Sankara uh, oath. And we're, we're inspired by uh, uh, Traor, the president of uh, Burkina Faso. I think it's a blessing that uh, Africa is a fearless, fearless uh, young leader. Uh, we thought we had one here, but uh, this one is questionable uh, that we have in the in the in the EFF. And I think Traoré must be studied uh, uh, correctly. I think he's on the on the correct path. And if the likes of uh, uh, Sankara and Traoré can practice some of these things. Why can't we practice it here and and leave the condition of uh, white people? You see, we can't critique white people during the day and at night. Uh, we sleep with them, we dine with them. We must choose as to uh, whether we are revolting or we are succumbing uh, to these reforms that are that are there. And if comrades have chosen uh, reform. It's okay, they've chosen. But don't tell the society that you will fight by any means necessary. Uh, the next thing you enjoy, the comfort of your aircon uh, conditions at q uh, It's not correct, it means you are using uh, the masses. It means uh, political parties are business. And if they are business, it means it's a good business because there's a serious parliamentary uh, grant that these political parties are. Are getting, and if you are, 
in control of it, it means you are, you are made. I'm saying there are people who have chosen that they are not revolutionaries. Granted, there's nothing wrong. But don't tell us that you are a revolutionary. Uh, people burned by the sun in the townships, the rural areas, telling them uh, to do door to door. Uh, while you know that there's no revolution, but uh, it's all about the su sustenance of your lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. As an individual, uh, so you've been here for 11 years? Yes. Best years of your youth you have spent with this July movement. Which areas do you blame yourself? See, every relationship, it, uh, it must be done with that way at its ending. Look, uh, where I say it's my areas of uh, uh, development is that one re reacted as opposed to raising some of the issues, you know? And, and sometimes you, you, you raise issues by, by reacting. I don't think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a proper uh, way of uh, engaging uh, on issues, but we are developing, remember? Uh, when you are the president, you are, you are serving in our council, you are serving at the level of the CCT. So it's, it's a preparatory school for the real uh, politics and I wish in the preparatory school uh, one uh, challenge some of these issues uh, sharply but we thought that's why I was not uh, I was disappointed but I was not really mad at the organization when they suspended me from America I thought you know to some extent you even think ah, maybe I was wrong you see but as in when you grow you understand certain you realize what happened uh, these comrades, uh, uh, they think we're kids here. Yeah. Uh, the economic freedom fighters. Uh, I read Tabumbeki's A Dream Defeat, mm -hmm. and you know, at the beginning there's a preamble of the poem that he talks about it, and that thing has been overarching in me. And every time I, that's a dream, I'm always thinking, are we going to have a difference of this dream? Do you think you diverging from red to green? You are doing it not, you are not, so the term that was used with Floyd was sell out, betrayal. Mm -hmm. Do you think you are betraying a dream or you think the dream that you had with the red berets was deferred to something else? It was no longer the dream that you envisaged when you joined uh, this leftist movement. It's an expansion. I mean, if you're honest, uh, you knew that uh, there's no way that uh, the EFF was going to take uh, power in the 2024 national general elections, right? And with the formation of the Mkonto Wesizwe party, uh, it was supposed to bring excitement to the EFF because the EFF, it's a reality, they can't do it alone. You see? Now, uh, to answer you directly, it's an expansion. Uh, and, and one also comments, uh, firstly, what President Zuma has done. I think he's a visionary. Uh, he's an intellect, an organic intellect. Uh, what he has done in these elections, it has never been done anywhere globally. Uh, in saying that uh, the trajectory that uh, South African politics is taking must be contested, it must be contested by Mkonto Osizwe party. You see, at his age, fighting, mobilizing, uh, I think those who are saying that he's doing it for his own interest, uh, uh, they are wrong. I think he's, a, he's, a, he's aware uh, uh, that uh, uh, what this country is going towards, it's not in the best interest of uh, uh, the citizens. Hence, Mkonto is his party. We come to the former deputy uh, 
uh, president of the EFF. It's not him, it's me. I'm saying I uh, am convinced that he saw that uh, there's a seal of EFF. That's why in his letter he was very clear that uh, uh, relinquishing uh, his responsibilities is not a vote of no confidence to the organization. So it is more of an expansion than anything else. And if these comrades of uh, EFF, they, they have an understanding of how Nkondo was formed on the 16th of, of December in 1961, uh, they should be celebrating that the time is now that uh, the land of this country will be restored to their rightful uh, uh, owners. You see, a revolution does not need red, uh, green, uh, and all of that. It needs unity of black people. That's what we want. All these things of uh, wearing colors, uh, uh, they are not going to help us. It means we'll be narrow in our approach if we are serious about changing the conditions of this country. I spoke to a gentleman called Mpo, who was a staunch EFF uh, student command as well. When it he, when he started, he was also in university. He said something that you have reverberated as well. He said the reason EFF would reach a ceiling very soon is because the messenger and the message has become known. So people have heard this. The people who could vote for EFF have already voted and the ceiling is reached. The best way to advance the economic freedom fighters is to change this messenger and maybe the message in giving Floyd an opportunity to lead. Maybe people are tired of Julius Malema and we posted about how will it happen, should Julius move away to save EFF so Floyd can come in because Julius is too much uh, an elephant to, to be in the same CCT when, when Floyd is leading. And to speak more of this uh, ceiling, in Limpopo, Putana says he reached the ceiling, and, but he was blamed that the ceiling is reached and he cannot grow the party anymore. Do you think this ceiling could have been saved? Maybe someone could have went to the roof or maybe even hit the roof if they had changed the messenger in Julius and gave Floyd an opportunity to lead this thing? Yeah. And maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, and mine is to say, you see, Julius is young, right? Uh, he's a leader. Uh, a leader, when they are young, making mistakes, they must be refined. They must not be removed. That is my belief. I'm saying a refined uh, Julius Malema. Uh, who's not intimidated, who knows that he's in charge. Uh, you don't have to tell the Republic that you are in charge. If you are in charge, you are in charge. You don't have to sing that you are in charge. If he can be refined, uh, lead uh, that organization, and be aware that there are people in top six, in CCT, that must be uh, respected, that must be allowed to state uh, their views. Uh, young people who are uh, smart, who must uh, feed from the students' command to uh, community politics. If that can be allowed uh, seamlessly, uh, I think we would be speaking a different story now. And we'll, if it were to change, we will speak a different story in future. Uh, I, I continue to this day to regard Julius Madam as the greatest political minds we have, and even today. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's a problem. You, you say he must be refined. Yes. I've done a lot of work on Julius Malema mm -hmm. where he flip-flops, and I don't want to give you examples now, mm -hmm. where he, he flip-flops on issues that you think this was a principal stance, but there he is, he flip-flops. Mm -hmm. And he's quoted a lot. Uh, mm. People call him a flip flopper. In him trying to accept that he must refine himself, he must polish his messaging, do you think he's afraid that he might look like a flip flopper? 
No, you see, all brilliant leaders, when you are truly leading an institution or an organization, you would know that there are people who are better than you, no matter how brilliant you are. True. Now, as a leader, there must be people that you are able to take no from. It doesn't have to be the whole organization or whole executive and all of that. But there must be people who say, no, but let, on this issue, let's debate. What do you think? You see, it can't be me, me, me. I'm in charge. That thing, it doesn't work. Uh, uh, the politics are changing, you, you see. Uh, now, I'm saying that uh, change can only happen if he's entrusted with people that can say, no, but President, on this one, Hernan or large. You, you see, all leaders have such people. If you don't, uh, you're going to reach a ceiling because you think you take a decision, you move all alone. doesn't happen like that. In the CCT, does Moshabi take losses? Does he advance certain policy directions where he's defeated and then he sits down calmly and he admits this one I've taken a loss? Because in public, he, he does say he does. But in the majority, does that happen? And uh, Bhutana spoke about those leaders are not well, they are not happy. Yeah. And uh, if they can challenge their positions and you know, advance their own views, why would they not be OK? Or Julius doesn't take no? No, no. You see, I said leaders are cowards in this conversation, mm -hmm. right? In identifying areas of development of a leader, uh, not only do you identify uh, his weaknesses, you also look into the organization broadly. Uh, if here in this trade union I'm leading with cowards, uh, it means I'll speak with finality on everything. Because these are cowards. No one will tell me that, no, but yes, we think you are wrong on this particular issue. Uh, cowards will not tell you uh, even when you are doing wrong things. But if there are leaders, leaders will hold you. They will take you toe to toe. Not in defiance, but saying on this position, uh, GS. As a leader, Luana, you'll have to listen and say, but what are these people saying? Let me give them platform to persuade me. But they must persuade you. You, you, you see. So it will be difficult when you have a, a powerful leader like him and cowards on this side, uh, whose job is to uh, defend and do bus list. And, and, and not be honest to the organization because they want deployment in parliament and, and, and provincial and local legislature. So cowards are there. And, and sometimes in as much as uh, a leader might be problematic, but if a leader is leading with cowards, uh, that's when a ceiling will come. Uh, so this next question will, will lead us into MK. Mm -hmm. Currently in the in our in our channel, politically incorrect, we are battling to define someone's personal policy or personal stance, uh, especially in terms of legacy mm -hmm. and an organization. Mm -hmm. So the three spear movement, uh, uh, they are one thing. I mean, ANC, EFF, and MK are one thing. Spear organizations always tell us what they do. But here's the problem. Let's talk about the nine wasted years. Mm -hmm. The nine wasted years, they say Ki Jacob Zuma. Mm -hmm. The great things that were done in any epoch of this little you know, pocket of ANC, mm -hmm. they attach it to someone they like. I want to distinguish, and I want you to help me with that, how do we identify this is a Julius Malema policy or Julius Malema stance? Because one day Julius Malema will come and put down 
uh, recordings of the CCT where his guys I'm being defeated here. The CCT is the one that says uh, open borders. I know they don't say open borders. I'm just giving you an example to say this thing was incorrectly blamed on me because I'm the one who speaks a lot on EFF policy. Like you said, press conferences is mostly Julia's, the rallies and stuff is mostly Julia. So he's the one who speaks on behalf of the EFF. It might be misconstrued on other things incorrectly attached to Julia's Malema. Maybe it's not even Julius Malema. Help us detach an individual from what they call a collective. That is not complex. Mm -hmm. You see here at NASA, the trade union, when it comes to retrenchment, I'm, I'm very good. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to dismissals, it's not my forte. Mm -hmm. There are people who are bad tired. As a leader, if a case of dismissal or any other thing comes, I know that one or that one day are good. I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, if there are strong leaders on a particular subject matter, why don't you give them a time to run with that particular issue? You see, mm -hmm. when your crisis are gone. You see, that's called a collective uh, approach. Right? But if you want to be a master of all subjects and not share responsibilities with the collective, that's when uh, problems are going to start. And you must take a responsibility. I guess you are the one who did not give uh, others a platform. So you must uh, uh, take responsibility. So that issue of recordings and all of that, uh, I don't think it will happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's TSA. Uh, I said to you, uh, they are cowards, uh, a leader is strong, and it becomes problematic. Now, if the situation is like that, the solution is that the leader must identify who are leaders here in my team who can assist me on the issue of migration and if the society is critiquing EFF on the issue of migration, why not have political classes for three months speaking to migration? Hearing what people of uh, Deep Slot, uh, Tembisa, uh, Mamilodi are saying about uh, migration. You see, you can run that program, and from that, you then develop a posture as an organization. And when you develop a posture, uh, People at all levels of society must be able to understand, comprehend, at their own language, what exactly are you saying. Currently, that is not the case on this issue of migration. Thank you very much. So you are, you are going to work with MK. Yes. Uh, people have been saying, if Floyd thought Juju is a dictator. They are going to a far worse dictator in Jacob Zuma. Any feelings about that? Mm -hmm. You see, South Africans are not analytical. Right? Look at all co press conferences of Mkondo Sizu party. President Zuma takes decisions, right? But he allows people to assist in growing the organization. He's a leader, he's respected, and he makes people aware that you don't cross the line. Right? Whereas uh, this side is something uh, completely uh, uh, different. Right? So I don't think uh, that uh, there's no discussion. Uh, in the MK. I think uh, Comrade uh, uh, Zuma is a person who would engage on, ideolog on ideological issues to a point where he convinces you or you convince him. I'm saying it is not there in my view uh, in the EFF. So when I ask this question, I always say, according to you, yeah. because you're not taking an organizational stance. 
what is it at MK that you think and you feel I could assist here? Yeah. 1961, 16 December, Nelson Mandela and the cohort, when they were saying, um, condo, we see, what is it that they wanted to achieve? It's liberation of the African people in this country. Dismantled completely apartheid. They tried. Apartheid is not dismantled. It's there in different uh, forms. Uh, President Zuma comes and says, let us resuscitate the ideals of 1961. Right? When an idea like that comes, you join so that you can contribute. In you contributing, the leadership will say, no, we think this is where you must put uh, posters for us. You do that because you believe in this particular uh, idea. I'm, I, I'm not entering here saying, hi, uh, there's my, I don't have a call. I'm excited about the Mkonto Wesizu. I'm saying I want to be part of the, of the VAK. I'm not coming saying I'm an expert. I'm not an expert. I'm just passionate. I have conviction when it comes to the uh, revolution. And leadership will guide or where do they want me to put the uh, posters. I don't think I have an area uh, of speciality where I can say, no, I see myself there. It means I'll be saving my own interest. I'm not saving what um, Konto or Sizwe is representing. Floyd Shibambu said it, um, Colin Makubela said it, and I spoke to Lindu Wesisulu who also repeated it. Mkonto Wesisulu combines uh, African uh, political parties and let us, all of us, relinquish what we are doing and go and join Mkonto Wesisulu to be one so we don't scatter our votes. Even Lindu Wesisulu said, you know, uh, the ballot there. Yeah, DRC, it's like almost 50 people who keep on fail. And that's very noble. But I'm asking myself, do you not find the criticism in Jacob Zuma that there were other parties who are pro-African like he, he wants, but he decided to open another one and create another home and tell people to bomb their home and come to them? Which one was he supposed to identify himself with? He fought and lost uh, two conferences at, at ANC. Mm -hmm. He could have joined a, uh, EFF. Uh, Dr. Chope could have joined EFF. He was on the verge by his own admission mm -hmm. because it's a house that they could come in and, and help build it instead of opening another one, because now we do not want other people to open other parties, but we are yeah. opening parties. I want you to defend that criticism. Yeah. Uh, President Zuma is better than me, and you is better than Julius Malema. He's got wisdom. He's been leading in trenches, leading the intelligence. So issues that me and you, we can't diagnose, he can diagnose those issues because of his wisdom. And I think it is his wisdom that guided him that he must not join uh, the EFF. And wait a while more. You don't want to take it further. No. Uh, and, and, and yeah, and, and I think I'm very clear. Mm -hmm. Because the next question would be, would you advise other people? So do you want to also say that to, you know, there's a progressive caucus in parliament. Yeah. And I'm very worried about it, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, yesterday's shenanigans in parliament were not supported by uh, the other uh, 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 members of the progressive caucus. It was just the red berets uh, doing it by themselves. And I'm worried if this uh, uh, progressive caucus is still going to be intact. Why do you need UAT? Why do you need ATM? Why do you need uh, PAC? All these parties. Of course, I'm just including PAC because uh, Azapo is limping too much. Azapo and PAC, they always go to elections together. Mm -hmm. Why don't they just drop all their things and join MK? Because I, I am for that. But 
I accept the, the criticism that why did we uh, allow MK to open while there were other parties. But I just want you to to speak on this. Do you encourage other people to close shop and come and, and, and join MK? Look, um, firstly, the Progressive Caucus is a reaction to the GNU. Uh, ordinarily, things that are formed out of reactions, they don't have the basis, the foundation. Uh, the only foundation is that you are reacting to the GMU. can be solid, right? But it does not mean that in future it cannot be solid, but there must be a different reason why it is being formed, not as a reaction to the, to the GMU. Now, we don't want many parties, obviously, in Parliament, but I said earlier on that some politicians have created business out, out of politics. You see, if you have people who have created business out of politics, how are you going to convince them that uh, they uh, must uh, relinquish their uh, powers in their businesses? They are not going uh, to do that. Uh, what attracted you to the Umkonto Wesizwe party? I said that uh, the ideals of uh, 1961, right, uh, wherein Nelson Mandela and other young leaders said the direction that ANC is taking is not going to liberate our people. Apartheid regime was coerced to succumb to democracy as a result of the formation of Umkonto uh, Wesizu because there was sabotage, there was an uh, operation uh, in this country. I'm saying the MK, you must not analyze it as the MK of now, but you must start it in 1961. And we are blessed to have a wise man in the form of President Jacob Gelechegise Zuma who said, all of you are playing marbles. The only solution is in Kondo, where his pattern was correct. You see, even the approach, the reaction of the people on the ground could tell you that uh, it's only Kondo, where that can bring about a difference uh, in this country. Do they have a constitution? Have you seen the constitution? Uh, do you know officially what they stand for? Yeah. Uh, you see, we must cease and desist from complying to the uh, Eurocentric standards of how we must run our affairs as African uh, people. That is number one. I'm now going to your question. In the IEC, you can't register a political party if you don't have a constitution. You can't. It's a requirement. It's a prerequisite. It's the first test uh, that you must pass. Yes. Uh, combined in that question is, have you perused it? Have you s saw something of interest that wants you to join it? And the reason I'm asking you is, in Belabela there was a there was a conference, that's where we saw first public and officially, we saw Bu Siabonga Gama, Brian Molefe, and, mm -hmm. and Bulaki Montana, they called it the Hoover mm -hmm. in Bela Bela Limpopo. And they, a lot of things came out of it. Mm -hmm. And of course, the declaration that it's not advisable to go to conference. Mm -hmm. The reason I want to ask you about this constitution is, it is said, by comrades of MK that I spoke to, that in that Huvo Bela Bela, they declared that Jacob Zuma will have uh, the ultimate firing and hiring powers. And I have not seen a statement. It could have been issued. I could not have seen a statement that communicates and, and confirms that. And I want to tell you, even before you answer, 
if that is the case, I want to applaud them because I'm one of those who says MK must not go to conference. Uh, they are useless. Uh, they are very divisive. Uh, Patriotic Alliance has done uh, well after 10 years without even doing those conferences, unlike Julius Malema, who went limping. He still insists on going to a conference in, mm -hmm. in December. So I want to tell you that if indeed the Hoover declared that Jacob Zuma will, only him will be the final habitant in terms of hiring and firing, why can't they communicate it? If it is there, is it against the, the Constitution? Yeah. You see, I like the operation of um, controversy. Uh, uh, President Zuma had it the intelligence, right? And as an intelligence uh, operator, you would know when to make things public, when not to make things public. Currently, there is an organization which is an opposition party called the Controversies Party, which is nine months, uh, by the way, and we are very fine. Uh, as uh, new members of Mkonde uh, Wesizwe, some of us, who are not obsessed about uh, the constitution and decisions that are taken. All we want is a mission and vision of this uh, organization. Those issues of uh, constitution, conferences, and all of that, we don't worry about them because at the helm is the wisdom of Ngamala. Uh, and that's what we want, that's what we need. Thank you. Uh, when going to the 2024 elections, May 29, uh, the question that I asked uh, rank and file members of MK were not party position, but you as an individual. What is it that you would feel uh, you'd be happy if MK gets this two third majority and the priorities that you would want MK to change? I do say it with an acknowledgement that the three SP organizations have 66%, mm. but they are reluctant to unite solo egos and use it. So when as an individual, you get two third majority as MK, what are the first things that you would want to change? The land, uh, land must be returned uh, to uh, the people. You can't have an identity, even grow yourself economically if you don't own uh, the land. The second issue is that uh, young people must have access to education. Uh, we live now in a society where in, uh, our people must be uh, educated. Uh, jobs must be created as a matter of agency. We must bring back uh, our industries. We must industrialize so that there's creation uh, uh, of jobs. Uh, we must own uh, the means of uh, production. Uh, we must nationalize uh, the reserve uh, bank. We must be in control. We don't know what's happening in our own country as far as our currency uh, is concerned. So I think those are the primary issues that would be of interest for me. And uh, everyone says, and, and of course Jacob Zuma has said the same, uh, you, do not, you are not worried for being a rank and file member uh, for, as long as, for as long as time gives in, in the MK. So meaning that even if you're not a branch secretary, branch chairperson, you do not mind. <laughs> I, I was a rank and file where I come from. I didn't yeah. have a problem. Yeah. I am a rank and file. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem. I and and you see, it's a mistake that even people are doing when it comes to the deputy president. To yes. Show that he leaves a position where he's a deputy president. Right. He goes and becomes a national organizer, meaning he must be banned by the sun. He must organize for President Zuma conferences and all of that. It's an indication that the national organizer of the MK went there to serve. Because when this thing of activism is in your blood, you will want to do it. Leadership is not about position. I'm not sure why the obsession wherein people think for you to have a, a influence, for you to lead, you must have a, a position. 
Leadership is not about any position. We must subject ourselves to the vision of uh, President Jacob Zuma. Konto Wesizwe party should make a change. And from Konto Wesizwe to make a change, I think you as journalists, you want a discussion where there's no a discussion that which position do you want. You see, let's serve the people. There's a crisis in this country. Position, uh, it should be the last thing that we talk about. That's why I was excited when I was watching the press a conference where they say, no, the top eight is one, two, three, four, and that's it. You see, you take away unnecessary obsession of people contesting, taking out their money. That's what we need. Um, you are you a practicing lawyer? No, I'm not practicing. I just have an LB degree. You're not practicing? Yeah. But you're using it wherever you're practicing? Yes, in the in the labor space, it's law. Yes, so, yeah. yeah, you are correct. Like yes, yeah. uh, of particular interest is this Roman Dutch law, mm -hmm. and Dr. Chope, who is a god mm -hmm. of laws, uh, Dr. Chope wants to dismantle this thing, mm -hmm. and throw it down, return it back where it came from with ships, and he wants to replace it with traditional laws. Do you have an idea of how? It would work, uh, maybe the, the literature that you consumed or what you had, do you understand how it would work? I know you may not be saying party policy, but what do you understand and how would you be happy when, you, when it's seen? I'll give an example. Uh, people are talking about uh, in rural areas, mm -hmm. you would find that Ronaldin Dona and Ronaldin Watt Kansela, like those those parallels sometimes they, they, they are conflicted and sometimes you'd find a donor who's very senior to a ward councillor, sometimes a ward councillor is senior to. Do you understand how it would work and what is it that you would want to work? It's broader than that. And for you to fundamentally change the jurisprudence of the Republic, it can't be in that space alone. What language are you going to use in the jurisprudence? You see? Now, uh, it must be multiplicity of changes in our society, in academia. In academia, what am I talking about? I'm saying there must be uh, an introduction of the language policy where in our language is developed to a point where it becomes a language of science. If it is our languages, our indigenous languages do not become the languages of science, even what Dr. Chope endeavors to achieve, it will be limited to some extent because we'll be uh, subjecting uh, what we call our uh, traditional laws to this language that is uh, uh, foreign uh, to us. So changes cannot be sectoral, they must be uh, broad. Africans uh, is a language of science. When uh, the colonizers came here, it was not a language of science. There was investment in universities about this language. That's why it is where uh, uh, it is uh, uh, today. So it, it can't be uh, him alone. It's broader than that. Okay. Uh, the dreams of MK. Uh, you are in Tswani, mm -hmm. and MK's is battling in Tswane. Uh, I'm saying it's battling because it's doing uh, numbers that are not reflective of their stance in, in yeah. Yeah, nationally. So just went to the, the by-elections and even in the, in the national elections, uh, MK is struggling. Yeah. And people are, correctly or incorrectly, uh, apportioning blame to MK being a uh, a Zulu nationalist party mm -hmm. and tribal party, regional party. Want to give an opportunity to spell that if that's the, not the truth? Mm -hmm. That is very narrow uh, to say that it's a tribal party. Who, who dominates in Poloko, in, in, in Limpopo? Uh, the three tribes would be Wapedi okay. dominating, yes. 
uh, in the eastern king uh, yeah amatosa different with a different uh, dialect of course uh, and and let me not speak of other provinces in the northwest this one uh. the likelihood is that if you are to have a party starting now in the northwest the likelihood is that the emergence of the party will be dominated by Botswana because it emerges there, right? Stronghold of President Zuma is what this case at N. It's like that. Uh, the base of uh, the party will be Zulu's because it's that's his stronghold. In El Impopo. Some even argue that uh, EFF is dominated by Pedis. I, 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 I don't think so, I don't know, but it might be true. You see, is it a Pedi uh, party? So that is very uh, narrow. You know, uh, Floyd Chivambo, uh, the national organizer, is not uh, uh, Zulu. Brian Molefe is not Zulu. Lucky Montana is not. Uh, uh, Zulu. Uh, so uh, le let us be sometimes uh, factual about uh, issues that we are, we are raising. It's one. Right? It's a mix of everyone else. If there's a leadership of uh, Tswani, will it be dominated by Zulus? The answer is no. Uh, that is misrepresentation of uh, Mkondo uh, 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 party. It's not a Zulu party. Uh, it's a party of South Africans. Lirumo last chap. Let's talk about NASA. The work that you do. What sparked it? Uh, we had always are uh, seeing it from a distance. We had always thought uh, it is uh, a union aligned to the ethos and the missions of the EFF. The same mistake we did with uh, Matunjwa's uh, uh, organization. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think our, uh, when I'm saying our, I'm assuming other people as well. Uh, you answered it to say, maybe we're not answering it directly. You say, uh, this economic freedom fighters did not have uh, other wings around it to assist in advancing this struggle. Did you struggle to get NASA to be recognized at EFF? No, no. Uh, the idea was not to get NASA recognized at uh, EFF. It was not even the plan. Because uh, oftentimes when trade unions are affiliated or have an alliance with a, a political party, they will be controlled by a political party. Right? If Rupert is funding the EFF and we go uh, to Remco with radicalism of the uh, NASA workers, the shutting, uh, the blood. Uh, the likelihood is that uh, you're going to be caught and say, no man, let's uh, finish this strike. So it is always important that uh, trade unions must be independent. They can have collaborations with political parties. NASA has been independent. It's independent. It will continue to be independent. It has never been our wish that it must be uh, recognized by the EFF. There was never uh, some sort of a discussion uh, leaning towards that direction. Do you not find it as a contradiction of what you just said about uh, the Congress movement having uh, these alliance partners? You included the Federation of COSATU with these multiple uh, uh, labor movements inside? Yeah. As, a, as, a strong, as a positive yeah. for the ANC? And, and let us check uh, when did these alliances uh, start of the ANC, in particular making reference to the labor movement. I think fighting, 
for uh, democracy, for the dismantlement of uh, the apartheid regime, it was necessary that uh, ANC and unions then must work together. But I will pose a question to say, pose the democratic dispensation, uh, was there a need for them to be uh, in alliance? I think we must do a proper diagnosis and come up with uh, uh, with the answers. Uh, and I'm saying if there is a union uh, that is strong with its own space, is it ideal that it must be affiliated to a political uh, uh, party? Uh, the answer is no. But when you take a political party in contesting elections, is it a need for a political party to align with the trade union. Yes, because that political party will benefit from the trade union. You see? But if we reverse what I've just said in saying, is it proper for a trade union to align with a political party? The answer will be different. Uh, please tell us about NASA. When was it uh, established and where do you organize? NASA emerges from FISMA's fall. Remember, we lead a successful uh, struggle uh, of insourcing in institutions of higher learning. That's why, as they say, I'm the general of insourcing, because we led, we fought over here also in ensuring that uh, the vulnerable workers, those mothers who were highly exploited, are absorbed permanently. Uh, by uh, the universities. 2019, the 14th of June, uh, we get our certificate from the Department of Labor. Uh, we are only, only existing in uh, seven uh, sectors. And in our second co Congress that took place on the 3rd of uh, September in 2022, we added in the eight sectors where we're existing to about 42. So I'm talking of uh, fast moving consumer goods, research institute, institutions of uh, higher learning, waste, engineering, municipalities, public sector. Uh, it's, it's 42 of them. Uh, we're growing organization, we're, growing, we're going to grow, we're forced to be uh, reckoned uh, with. Uh, I think uh, NASA is one of the progressive trade unions uh, led by relatively a young uh, general secretary. So what a future. No one can wipe us uh, out. Those who think they are contesting uh, the power in this republic alone, uh, they are not analyzing things correctly. Why existing here? Uh, to also contest power so that we can change uh, the conditions of our people on the ground. Mm, any future plans? Do you, do you have a federation in mind? Are you, do you believe in politics of federation and uniting with other labor unions to? Unity of uh, workers' unions uh, is very, very, very important because I don't think uh, in our individual spaces we can fight uh, the system, we can fight the exploitation of workers. Uh, a case in point in is section 198 of the Labor Relations Act, spe speaking about uh, permanent employment of, uh, of the workers. You, you know? uh, NUMSA won that struggle legally, they did not win the struggle politically. And it's a struggle of absorption of workers indefinitely, that must be won uh, politically. If you win it legally only, uh, employers uh, bottomless pit of resources, they're going to frustrate you. That's why to date, uh, there's still those who don't comply because lawyers are interpreting uh, 198 in many different uh, forms to suit their own narrative. And, and you can in this space only fight uh, legally, you must also fight uh, uh, politically. So when it comes to a unity of uh, 
uh, the workers I fully agree. Uh, are federations relevant? The answer is no. Uh, what is the role of Okosatu? What is the role of uh, SAFTU? What is the role of uh, NATO? None of them, even combined, can bring uh, the labor force into a standstill. They can't call us their away to say we're fighting for this particular issue for workers. For as long as you don't have a federation that can call us their away, I don't see their relevance unless if they will be the one which is going to shake uh, capital where in the general secretary of uh, that federation speaks, the rent drops. Then you will know that we have a leader of uh, workers. Uh, you've got dreams of sitting issues on a national level and then also answer it with uh, your closing remarks. Yeah. Net like Parliament, trade unions including uh, political uh, parties, in their current existence, they are reform institutions. In this economic setting, can they change the conditions of workers? The answer is no, because they are reforms. It's institutions formed so that they can serve capital at the end of the day. But can we sit and say we don't participate at NetLag? I think uh, it wouldn't be wise. Uh, uh, they've approached us, uh, SAFTU approached us, we said no to Vavi. Uh, not to approach us, we said no to them because uh, uh, we, we don't see the value in, in, in joining them. But if there was a value, of course we are going to join them. It was going to be a vehicle that we serve at NetLag so that we can influence the laws that are created, drafted, and ratified by, by Parliament. So if an opportunity comes, we will serve there, not because we believe uh, uh, in the structure, but because there are little reforms that we can achieve out of serving in those structures. Squeezing the last one. Do you think the two-port system is a gain for, for the workers in general, and especially the fact that uh, SARS is, is detecting a lot of, of, yeah. of tax there? Look, it's, 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 it's not going to work. Uh, it's unfortunate that you, know, you can't uh, control workers when it comes to their money. Uh, the advice of NASA workers is that uh, workers should not have uh, access to their uh, pension money because uh, oftentimes when they retire they go home uh, hungry. Uh, however, uh, this is just uh, a money generating uh, type of approach for government in as far as taxation is concerned. Uh, the maximum is uh, 30,000, some will qualify for that, for that 30,000, some will not qualify for that uh, 30,000. So. If you say you want them to have access so that uh, they can improve their current conditions, I'm not sure with 30,000, what is it that they can uh, do. So I don't think it's in the best interest of the workers. Of course, workers, it's a reality, they're going to apply for that money, including members of NASA workers. We advise them uh, against it, but it's their money at the end of the day. Some of them, they are not even getting enough. So there's no way they wouldn't want to access that money. Dr. Pomeroulian, thank you very much. You're welcome. Tobe. Sure.